are all upset with what's happening to our community and how it's affecting our businesses. I'm not going to say much about me or what we're doing, but first I want to introduce Captain Mike Connor. Mike is a fly and light tackle fishing guide who has fished from Florida Bay to the Indian River Lagoon over the last 40 years. Mike is an outdoor writer and former fishing magazine editor who serves on the board of the Indian River Keeper and the Rivers Coalition Defense Fund, along with myself. Mike has been an outspoken activist for the St. Lucie River and the Indian River Lagoon throughout the 20 years he's lived here in Stewart. Not only that, Mike is one of my best friends. Mike Connor. Good morning, everybody. It's a great turnout. Thank you. Obviously, everybody's concerned about the situation. We're in a crisis. It's an emergency. Uh, I've been here for 20 years now. When I first came to Stewart, the IRL and the St. Lucie River were pristine fisheries. Really great, despite discharges in the past. In the last three seasons or so, uh, 10 years actually, I've seen a real steep decline in the fishery itself. The discharges will kill this fishery. Not just an ecological disaster, but it kills our wallets. People like me who guide, we bring a lot of folks to the water. We bring a lot of folks to Martin County. And when our customers don't come back or have a poor experience, all the other businesses depend on us and help us, tackle shop owners, boat builders, all the restaurants in town, they all feel the heat. They all feel the loss because our customers come here and spend weeks, at least three, four days at a time. This past two years, I've had to turn down customers because of bad water. This year, especially in the last two weeks, I've actually declined charters because I really can't show them a good experience. The water all the way up the RL to St. Lucie County is affected by Lake Okotobi discharges. And we don't see much help in the near term. We see some projects on the books that will help a little bit that we need massive discharges to stop. And in my opinion, and opinion of many of us, we need one thing. We need Governor Scott to declare an emergency for our county and Lee County and Florida Bay and the Florida Keys, which by the way, starving for water, Because the very water you're seeing here, excess water killing our estuaries, is the water that needs to go south and go to Florida Bay and hydrate that fishery. It's a huge thing. Florida's the sport fishing capital of the world. The state needs to deliver on that and protect the fisheries as such. So in closing, I'd like to thank Bull Sugar and Capture Clean Water for sponsoring the event. And secondly, I just think we have one solution. That's to buy the land south of the lake with the Amendment 1 funds and send the water south. Thank you. Yeah, man. All right, up next is Captain Daniel Andrews. Daniel is a Lee County inshore charter guide who fishes Pine Island Sound, Sanibel Island, and surrounding waters. He spends over 250 days a year on those waters, and his concern for the effect of the devastating Lake Okotobi discharges moved him to co-create and launch Captains for Clean Water, a grassroots group of charter guides whose mission is to stop Lake Okeechobee discharge into the Caloosahatchee River. Captain Daniel Andrews, folks. Thank you everybody for showing up here today. Uh, it was a great turnout. Uh, am I talking too loud? Get up and <laughs> All right. Um, can't be loud enough. <laughs> absolutely. Nice so, yeah, that's the problem. So we, we're organizing captains and every, everybody in the fishing community um, for really the first time to, to get out there and have a, a single unified voice uh, from all of South Florida. And, and we're pushing that nationwide. Uh, there's only one solution to this. And, and we have to restore the flow. We, we have to use our, our money, that Amendment 1 funds, that, that came from everybody here that's, that's bought a house or any real estate transaction. You put money in that. That's our money, and it will be used in the way we want it to purchase land in the Everglades agricultural area to solve this. There's only one solution. And I spent two days in Tallahassee. I met with, with many of elected officials from, from this coast and the west coast, and many of them sat there and looked at me right in the face and said, we're not going to do it. We, we want to do this instead. And that's bullshit. We're not going to put up with it. Yeah, you know, man. It's, it's our money. Bullshit. It's our money. And science, science is telling us what the problem is. We're going to do it. We're going to get it done or we're going we're gonna to get them out of office. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Captain. All right, next 
is Captain Mark, is owner and CEO of Stewart's own DOA Lures. Mark knows our waters like the back of his hand, is an outspoken conservationist for our waters. Mark serves as an ambassador for the Treasure Coast fishing economy by hosting outdoor riders from all over the U.S. at his popular Outdoor Riders Festival held annually on the Indian River Lagoon. Captain Mark Nichols. This is pretty cool. I'm glad everybody's here. Uh, good friend of mine is Captain Greg Gentile. Captain Greg Gentile quit guiding 15 years ago because of water quality. We fished together since he started his guide business, which is when I started my fishing lure business in 1989. I figured uh, yesterday morning I've generated about $32 million since I started my business here. I've hired a lot of people here. I have a lot of people that work for me here. I have a lot of friends here. There's two things I really want to harp on. One is I started over there in Palm City, right beside Palm City School Elementary. And kids would come dumpster dive all the time and get my lures, all our rejects. Then they'd come see if they could bum hooks and weights from us so they could go fish. And my, uh, this, my office manager, she was really tough. She'd fight it and I'd always be a sucker and give them a bunch of hooks and they'd go fish. I didn't care. But, since then, as, as was just said, I started having an outdoor writer and media events here. And I loved having them here and I loved having outdoor writers here because I knew I could go catch them the biggest trout they've ever caught. And I could probably catch them the biggest snook they had ever caught as well. Consistently, I could go do it, make it happen. Now I can't. Now I go out there and I see sand where I used to have to push my way through grass. I mean literally push my way through. I used to trip over conch shells. I noticed in the last few years I see conch everywhere. That's because there ain't no grass so they're obviously crawling around on the sand. There's no place for them either. We're looking at a complete change in our fishery and it'd be nice if we could get it back the way it's supposed to be. Our phrase forever was pray for drought. When Greg and I fished together our phrase was always pray for drought. Greg, went, Greg and I went to some of the first River Coalition meetings and, we, and Greg walked in with a uh, plastic turd and he threw it on the floor. And he said, this is what you're getting now. And those people laughed him out of there and virtually kicked him out. The, the president of the chamber at the time said, this is a quote, how do we put a positive spin on this? <laughs> so. Anybody who's selling real estate, I hope that you're representing yourself correctly and telling them that you're selling on property on polluted water. <laughs> you better be straight up with them. And I hope if you don't, they see you. Because it needs the truth needs to be out. That's enough. Blah, blah, blah. I can talk for days. <laughs> up next is Tim Kinney. Tim served in law enforcement for over 30 years and is now owner for, of Tackle for Less Tackle Shop in Stewart, a stone's throw from the St. Lucie River. Tim has fished the Treasure Coast waters for over three decades and is passionate about preserving the, our fisheries. Tim Kenny. Good afternoon. First of all, let's hear it for Bull Sugar. Is that all you got? Let's hear some more. guys like Kenny Hinkle Woo! and Mike Connor. Yeah. All, of us, all of us should be as passionate as they are for this river. It means everything to us. I recently read a proclamation by Governor Scott back in November declaring Small Business Saturday how important small business was for the state of Florida. He said it represented 55 percent of the total jobs in the state of Florida. He went on to say that small business was the backbone of Florida. He's breaking our back right now. I'm going to make this short and simple. You know, Big Sugar is in the back pockets of all these corrupt politicians. But we have something in our back pocket that is much more powerful. It's your voter registration card. Take it out. Use it. But that card can be dangerous as well. So be very careful who you vote for. Do your homework. That's all I have to say. And uh, on behalf of all the tackle shops in Martin County, we appreciate your business. 
We hope that you'll uh, continue your support for us. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Cap. Billy Perriman is next. She's a realtor for Keller Williams, and she's a mother with children. Come on up, Billy. Good afternoon, and I'm actually really honored to be here. I definitely don't have all the experience and knowledge that these gentlemen and ladies behind me do. Though I can tell you as a mother, when we first moved here in 2009, my sons loved the water, and to be able to go to swimming, and they sail, and they surf, and now, even though they're 14 and 17, I don't even want them to be in the ocean or the water. And even in real estate, I was like, when you hear people, even yesterday at the meeting, there's a gentleman who lives on Nettles Island. It's like, basically, like because of the water, it smells like pollution outside of his doorstep. I was like, which is going to affect our housing prices. Even if it's not affecting it now, it's already trickling down. The clients are already asking, you know, is it safe to even be in the water? So, you know, I definitely am honored to be here today, and I definitely know that the only way that we can ever change anything is if we talk so loud that they have to hear us. Yes. And, you know, so I just, as a mother, you know, you, we just, you don't stop until they fix it. You just don't stop. So, thank you. All right, next up is uh, one of my hometown heroes, Martin County Commissioner Sarah Hurd. Sarah's a multi-term commissioner, former commission chair who has been tirelessly advocating for the river and for the preservation of Martin County. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Hurd. Thank you all very much. This river is our lifeblood. For each of us, we have our own personal reasons why this is so important to us. My husband and I moved here in 1985 for one reason, and it was because of the Indian River Lagoon. We were uh, beginner uh, windsurfers at the time, and there's no finer place in the world to windsurf if you're a beginner beginner windsurfer. I can't tell you how many hours we spent in the Indian River Lagoon enjoying this, that, spa, that wonderful resource. It's the resource that we love most dearly in this county. And I have terrible news, it's going to get far worse before it gets better. But it will get better. We have to put pressure on the legislature to spend amendment money the way that we voters, 75% of us, intended. What we do Let's keep up the pressure. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Real quick, I want to bring up Evan Miller, who started the biggest protest Martin County's ever seen in 2013 from C C4CW, Citizens for Clean Water. Thank you, everyone, so much. I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, one of the biggest things I think that we need to accomplish is education. I'm surprised at how many people don't know about the details behind this whole thing. And that's one of our biggest missions right now is to keep everybody informed. Also, I'm tired of the special interests in sugar. The polit politicians, special interests in sugar, we got to stop that right here. This is what it says it all right here. This is one of the biggest things. Thank you guys. This is a guy that was in D.C. with me, was in Tallahassee with me. He's one of the loudest voices ever, <laughs> not just in St. Lucie County, but everywhere. <laughs> I'm talking about St. Lucie County, Chris Dazowski. Come on up, buddy. You know, they said that uh, I was going to speak today and uh, I should maybe prepare something. I said, I said, uh, that's the first time I've ever heard that. You can't hear me. That's interesting. Um, you know, when Kenny said that uh, he'd like me to speak here, uh, he said maybe prepare something. I said I don't need to prepare anything. Uh, this is about 30 years of fighting for this. How many other people have been fighting for this for for decades? Decades. Decades. You know, the bottom line is, if you have a house and your house was plumbed decades ago, 
and you had lead pipes and your water was coming into your house and you were drinking it and your children were drinking it and you were poisoning yourself, you were killing yourself, what would you do? You'd re-plumb the house. Well, we've got a serious problem here. These folks behind me and some of you in the audience especially are losing your businesses at an alarming rate. This isn't about a bunch of tree huggers holding hands and singing kumbaya. This is about the economy of the state of Florida. That's the most important part of what we do here is run an economy that brings wealth and, and, and opportunity and quality of life to our community. This is Armageddon, folks. This is a fight between good and evil. Right. Yep. You, we, are the good. Yeah. The evil is not doing anything. If this had started 30 years ago, progress would have been made. The voters of this state, in a bipartisan approach, if we took a poll in here, I bet you we'd be 50-50 Republicans and Democrats. Do you think? Do you think? This is not a single political issue for one party. This is a party of people. This is a human party. This is a quality of life party. We're not seeing things get done. I recently attended a seminar at Harbor Branch. And I sit on the Indian River Lagoon National Estuary Program and we were talking about what are we going to do to fix the lagoon? Well, the NEP has been in, in place now for 25 years. We have 10 or more plans and engineering and this is what we're going to do. We're not doing it. The time is now that this legislature and this governor, along with local governments, create a long-term irreversible policy that puts in place the function of changing the plumbing of the state of Florida across the board, fixing the plumbing once and for all over a 30, 40, 50 year plan. You gave, we gave, the legislature cover their back to put $800 million a year in fixing the problem over a 20 year period. Why can't you do it? Because you choose not to. I heard someone say, you need to vote. You need to know who, who you're voting for. Jackie Lippitt! <laughs> Chris Sadowski's running for re-election, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. These are them, right there. <laughs> but seriously, folks, um, we are now... This is, this is Florida's Chernobyl. This is Florida's Chernobyl. We have killed the Golden Goose. This... This estuary may never come back. We are at a tipping point. You've heard Mark Perry speak over and over and over. You've heard other scientists say it very clearly. We continue to chase after the symptoms. It's not the science. We know the science. The science is the science is the science. It's the plumbing. Fix the plumbing. It's the plumbing. Back in the 90s, it was, it's taxes, stupid. It's the taxes, stupid. No. The bottom line, it's the plumbing. Fix the plumbing once and for all. Create a reversible policy and plan. Fund it for a long period of time. Over time, fix the water. Save on the good. Let's go! Thank you, Chris. Thanks very much. And all the speakers and the folks behind me, the media, please stick around. We'd love to tell our stories. I'm sure everybody here has a personal story to tell about losses of business. And folks, thanks again. But remember, Amendment 1 money must be earmarked to buy land south of the lake, preferably in the EAA, and send the water south. Tell your legislators that. Tell Governor Scott that. Tell him over and over. Email him. Call him. Bug him. Become a pain in the ass if you have to. Thanks so much. Next up is Captain Holiday. Good morning. Good morning. I've prepared a speech for y'all. My name is Mike Holiday, and for the last 30 or so years, I've made my living off the water here, either as an ocean lifeguard, a fishing guide, or a fishing writer and photographer. But that's not why I stand here before you today. 
I'm here because Stewart, Florida is where I choose to live and raise my family. And that's because it offers the water-oriented lifestyle that we love. See, Florida's a peninsula. It's surrounded by water. And the majority of our recreational and outdoor activities are water-based, which is why our population lives along the coastline. You know, if you don't like water, you better love golf. <laughs> I don't play golf. Neither does my family. I stand here before you because I love where I live and to tell you that I'm not going anywhere. The way I see it, we're looking at the perfect storm. Every person here knows, every one of you, that the polluted water being sent to our coast via man-made canals needs to go south through Sugar Land where it will naturally filter, restore the river of grass, and recharge the aquifer for South Florida's water supply. In the last year, our politicians have voted to support sugar subsidies, despite the fact that everyone here today is against them. They misappropriated Amendment 1 funds, money that everyone here, everyone that voted for them, knows was meant to purchase conservation lands, and specifically to buy land south of Lake Okeechobee to facilitate the return of the natural sheet flow. Our politicians continue to support fracking in a flat state where the water supply is completely dependent on the groundwater, on the underground aquifer. And they support all aboard Florida, a passenger rail system, a farce of a passenger rail system from Miami to Orlando that everyone here knows is designed to move freight and will ruin every one of our downtown areas in Stewart, Jensen Beach, Fort Pierce, and Vero Beach. I grew up in believing in the American dream, a dream based on the basic tenets that hard work will allow me to accomplish anything that I want and that I could even be President of the United States one day. And if I worked hard, and save my money, I could buy a house. And when that house was paid off, it would be enough, it would have enough value to support me in my retirement. I grew up believing in a political system that dictates that our elected officials are supposed to represent the people, to vote the will of the people, not a personal agenda dictated by contributor funding and greed. What I see before me is a perfect storm where historic rainfall has sent over 3 billion gallons of polluted water to the East Coast every day. Where over 7 billion gallons a day of polluted water are going to the West Coast. What we're looking at right now is the single largest habitat destruction in the history of Florida. And it's happening during a tourist season and an election year. And that's created the perfect storm of public outrage that has you here today. So I'm here to say there's a public storm of outrage and it's coming after you, Rick Scott. Yeah. It's coming after you, Marco Rubio. It's coming after you, Adam Putnam, and every goddamn one of you who misappropriated Amendment 1 funds. It's coming after every politician who supports sugar subsidies, fracking, all aboard Florida, and everything else that the entire population is of the state is against and ruins our quality of life. This is an election year, and if you want my vote, you're going to have to stand in front of me and out loud say, I will not support sugar subsidies. I will return Amendment 1 monies to their rightful use. I will vote against fracking. All aboard Florida!
than anything destroys what it is about our quality of life. And if you want my vote, as a politician, you better stand up and say, I will fight to my last breath to purchase the land to restore the natural flowways south of Lake Okeechobee, to recharge the Florida aquifer, to restore the river of grass, and to rebuild the second na largest national park in America. <laughs> See, I fish and I vote. I dive and I vote. I surf and go to the beach and I vote. I take my kids tubing and recreational boating, and I vote. And so do you. My name is Mike Holliday, and I live here, and I'm going to vote every politician who works to destroy my way of life out of office. And so will everybody else who's here. Last thing. Take notice, politicians. There's a storm coming. It's a storm of public outrage, and it's coming after you. Thank you everyone for coming out. Buy the land, send it south. 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 And if any politician tries to tell you something otherwise, you tell them they're full of bull sugar. Thank you.